Howdy, everybody. Today, I've decided to take you through the setup for the Drifter. So let's get the rulebook open and get started. Start here. This just goes over a brief explanation of the game. Below the Start Here section, it goes over the contents of the game. The booklet contains two different sections. The rule book, and then inside we have the events book. Then there is the hex map, which contains all the different areas you can explore throughout the Wild West. The different terrain, there is the desert, there is grasslands, marshland, forest, mountains, and then there's a railroad that runs all the way up the middle of the entire map. Plus there are also four towns. One there, one there, one there, and one in the desert. Also under the content section, there is what you will need to play the Drifter. You will need a pencil, a D10, a D4, a D6, and you will need a number of small tokens for your tracking sheets and also to represent your movement on the map board. After contents, we move on to character creation, getting the drifter ready for gameplay. So the first part talks about wound levels. Wound levels represent your health, and the following wound levels are none, light wound, medium wound, heavy wound, debilitating wound, and then finally dead. So you don't use a number system for your hit points. It is all based on wound levels. After it discusses wound levels, it goes on to finesse, which is your first stat we'll be talking about. And this represents all of the drifter's physical skills. Your character starts with a finesse of four, and your finesse skill can also lower depending on your current wound level. Other characters you encounter could also have finesse skill. Finesse is also used for combat. So that brings us to the first page of the tracking sheet. The very top of the sheet, you'll see the drifter's wound level. We start with the wound level of none. So let's get a token on there to represent that. Underneath each wound level, you can see a, your current finesse score. So as you increase in wounds, also your finesse score drops. So after finesse, we come to the next stat, which is hunch. And that represents all the drifter's mental skills. To determine our hunch skill, we have to roll a d4. Let's do that. Four. So we rolled a four for hunch, so we come to the page one of the tracking sheet and put a token on four. After hunch, we have the final stat, which is karma. It represents the universal balance. Karma represents your character's amount of luck. And we start with two karma points. Use a token to keep track on the tracking sheet. Once again, back to page one of the tracking sheet. We go to karma. We start with a two karma. After karma, we are done with the drifter's stats. Now we determine, at the beginning of the game, how wanted we are by the law. So bounty suit indicates how wanted you are by the law. The higher the bounty suit, the higher the price on your head. There are five different suits. There is X, which is no bounty, clubs, which is low, diamonds, which is a moderate bounty, hearts, which is high, and then spades, which is the highest. To determine our starting bounty suit, we roll a D4. Two. Our starting bounty suit is a two, which is diamonds. We then come over to the table sheet, which contains the bounty suits. And we place it under diamonds. So this is the column we will roll under whenever we roll for a random event. And all the events are kept in the event book. This is the events book, as I've shown you earlier. Now we're on to our money tracker. This is used to keep track of how much money we have, and we use tokens to keep track. So it says here, some characters you encounter along the way will have potential loot on them, which would be indicated by what's called a loot suit. 
and that comes in all the different form, uh, different card suits. This determines which column you roll under on the loot table on table D1 of the table sheet after defeating all the opponents. So back to the table sheet. There is table D1, the loot table. So for our starting amount of money, what we want to do is to now roll a D10 on the loot table on the table sheet under the X column to determine if we start the game with any money, etc. So we roll a D10, an 8, which is $2. Oh, but there's an asterisk beside it. Let's read what that means. There's more. Roll again the same suit. Excellent. So we have two, $2 plus 5, $1. And there is no asterisk there, so therefore we start with $3. So back to page one of the tracking sheet. This is where we keep track of our money. So we'll use a token here. $3. Now on to weapons. You begin the game with fists and a pistol. Back to page one of the tracking sheet, we have our weapons. Fists, and its suit damage is X, and pistol, its suit damage is diamonds. The suit represents how powerful the weapon is. So fists was under X, so you can see the different wound levels depending on your roll result. And then the pistol was diamonds, so you can see the wound result potential with that weapon. Now it's important to note with wound levels that let's say the drifter has a light wound already, and then he's shot by a bandit and he takes a medium, medium wound. The wounds compound on themselves. So therefore, a medium wound would be two shifts over. If I already had a light wound and I took another light wound, it would go to medium. If I took a heavy wound and I was on medium, and I already had a medium wound, light, medium, heavy, I would be dead. So after weapons, it goes on to talk about equipment. Now this is where you record any equipment you discover, purchase, steal, etc. along the way. There is no limit to the number of items you can carry. It is assumed that between you and your horse, you can handle the load. An event will specify if any items you find are to be recorded under your equipment. And equipment would be recorded on page one of the tracking sheet under equipment. After equipment, you have points of interest. And at this portion of the tracking sheet, this is where you record any relevant information in regards to points of interest. You would keep track of points of interest on page two of the tracking sheet. So a point of interest essentially is just a special location that you've learned about somewhere on the map. And you can see that all the hexes are numbered. So the event will specify when you discover a point of interest, what hex number it is located at, or a mechanic to determine where the point of interest is, the name of the point of interest, and then finally the event number. Because there is an action called perform a point of interest action. But that's something we can cover later on. So the specific event you would turn to when you performed a point of interest action. But we haven't gone over actions yet. Also on the second page of the tracking sheet, we have a place to write down any partners you come across on the way. And you can have up to three partners. Finally, on the second page of the tracking sheet, we have the location where you can keep track of wound levels for opponents. There is also a sheet with more of the same for uh, keeping track of opponents' wound levels, just in case you're fighting more than two. So I've placed tokens on wound level none for any opponents, both on the one, the page two tracking sheet and the extra sheet. So then we are told now to open the events book. And we go to event E001. So it goes over who you are and what you're trying to accomplish. And then it comes to the section down here, where after you have created your drifter, you then determine which hex you start at on the map board. And here it says, roll a d6 to determine which hex you start at on the map board. Roll a d6. Let's do that. A 1. 
A one is hex number 17-3. So 17-3, 17-3. Place your token on that hex. We've done that. You gently groan, shake off your dusty hat, climb aboard your horse, and set off to seek your destiny in the Wild West. Choose an available action in the uh, rulebook, R101A, located in the rulebook. So now we just turn back into the rulebook here and locate R101A. So here are actions. So here's the, the meat of the game. And here are all the different actions that you can take part in. Actions allowed in any hex. Travel to an adjacent hex, which is rule 101B, your most common choice. The heal action, so you stay in the current hex to attempt to heal yourself or a partner, which is rule 101C, but it requires certain equipment. These are actions allowed only in certain types of hexes. Point of interest, only on a hex that contains a known point of interest. We discussed that earlier, what, our point of, what a point of interest is. Actions allowed only in combat. Flee, so you can attempt to escape combat, which is rule R1019. So let's say for this action, we're going to perform a travel action. R101B. R101B, travel to a new hex. Move your token into an, any adjacent hex of your choice. Okay, so let's, try, let's move down to this hex here. After you have moved your token into the new hex, roll for an event using the event table, table A on the table sheet, under the column based on your current bounty suit to determine the event you encounter. Turn to the event in the event book. So like we determined earlier, our bounty suit is currently diamonds. So we roll under the diamond column and we roll a D100. And that can be done by using either two 10-sided dice, which I actually have here, or you can just use one 10-sided dice and roll it twice. So that would be one, eight, that would be an 18. But I actually have two 10-siders here, one with 10s and with ones, so let's roll that. 37, so what is 37? Left-hand side, roll result, 37 under diamonds is event number 153. So we then turn to event 153. So we'll stop right there. That is the setup for playing the Drifter. We don't want to get any spoilers, so let's not read the events. So next uh, video, I will explore how to do combat, which is very straightforward, but that'll be for next time. So thank you for watching everybody. Bye bye for now.